Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And I had a request from Nate, a Canadian prepper, to actually do a video for all the new subscribers that came over to the channel that may be looking for more of a beginner's video. Said I'm too smart for my own good. I totally agree with him. All joking aside, I'm going to be walking you through in this video what you should be planting if you're looking to save money for your family in the upcoming months with food. Let's face it, grocery prices are getting out of control and it's just going to get exponentially worse as the fuel prices climb and there is a drought season headed our way. I work in farming, we farm, I just, that's a fact. We are going to have crop failures. Um, and it's going to either come in the form of drought or it's going to come in the form of pests that come along with droughts such as cutworms or grasshoppers things that people aren't talking about yet but i can guarantee you will be the bulk of our conversation here in the next two to three ish months so with that being said there are some crops to grow that you can either store or are just going to help alleviate that grocery bill one thing i got asked by my neighbor here not too long ago was is it too late to actually start the garden we're heading into almost the middle of June and the classic thought is that everything in the garden has to be in by May long and if you're even a week late it's totally done. The truth is where we are here in zone 3 the last frost date is approximately June 10th meaning you can start planting outdoors on June 10th and you can take even two weeks after that to get everything in the ground and still gain a yield. It runs up to around 110 growing degree days but we don't need anywhere near that to grow a vast majority of the crops that we will be talking about here today. So some things you do want to keep in mind is what does your family actually eat? What produce do you spend the most money on or what canned goods are you currently spending the most money on and are they fruit or vegetable based? And then as well as looking into what kind of lighting conditions you have. Those are my top three. So when we look at things we actually eat in the grocery bill, when I think of what our family truly purchases, it's things like lettuce and leafy greens, and then we will start digging into spinach and kale and frozen formats for stir fries. But when it comes to what I'm canning or what I'm using from cans, the list gets much, much longer. This can range from carrots to corn, to peas, to beans, to tomatoes, things like that. So I encourage you to actually step away from things like lettuce or spinach or leafy greens and dive into those canned goods because those are the things that are going to go up over time. We can all skip the salad, but we cannot skip the bases to a vast majority of the things that we're cooking. So one of my favorite crops to actually grow is the tomato crop. You can see this because I have two full entire beds of this and this is not even close to everything that I'm growing this year. Tomatoes are a great addition to any garden and they can be used for salsa, whole tomatoes, pasta sauce, paste, you name it. And it's obviously something that can preserve very, very nicely in cans. The other bonus here is that we can actually water boil water bath can this we don't need the fancy pressure cookers to get this done next on the list is hands down cabbage so these this plant should not be underestimated it can be canned it can be fermented it can be frozen it can be parboiled and it can be eaten fresh it is essentially the most versatile green you could possibly grow and one cabbage can supply you with a lot of product you can make things like cabbage rolls um, and freeze them, all different sorts of things. And they grow great in shade. One thing you do wanna consider though is actually a cover. So this behind me, I just did a video on this not too long ago. It's tool that you literally use at weddings. <laughs> very inexpensive to do and that's kind of the only addition that it needs now one thing with the brassica species is they do like sulfur so if you can get a fertilizer that has some sulfur in it you'll be good to go like i said one head of cabbage can do a serious amount of food um, regardless of what you're using it for so 
Cabbage hands down is the perfect beginner's garden that grows in low light conditions. So if you have a shady backyard or a shady balcony, grab one of these bad boys. So next on the list is actually peppers. Peppers are great for food fatigue. You can grind them down after they've been dried and use them for seasonings. You can pickle them and use that for tacos or nachos and you can even incorporate them into your pasta sauces or your salsas if you choose to eat them they're also great for seed saving because they don't really need any extra steps other than removing them and allowing them to dry out so peppers definitely a great choice now if you're in canada or cold climate i heavily suggest you put them into containers because container gardening is the best way to grow peppers hand just hands down every time I put them in the ground or in a raised bed I get less than stellar results but with these bad boys in containers they produce like crazy you can also actually also overwinter these indoors if you have a grow light or you can put them in a, a state of dormancy so next year your harvest will be even bigger and you won't have to purchase new seeds so peppers while they're not high calorie they're definitely worth your time. Okay, so I don't have a ton of root veg here in the city. Most of my root veg is actually planted at the farm. So this can include onions, carrots, beets, turnips, radishes, things like that. All of these things actually preserve very nicely, whether that be through freezing or through canning, but they also add a much needed flavor level of flavor and diversity and color. So all things incorporated, A++. If you're gonna go with one, it should be carrots. They're really nice and high in sugar and they come in a different array of colors. So let's face it, color can sometimes get boring if we're using our own homesteaded to type stuff. So the more colors you can get, the better your palate or the palatability the actual food will be. Here I'm growing some onions, um, which is another great addition, stores perfectly. Um, you can also pickle these or ferment these. And one thing I will say for higher yields or a larger onion, I would go with the Walla Walla bulb because that is the larger sized one. And then you actually want to spoon and loosen up the soil around the base of your onions just to help with better bulb development. And so that there's no pressure on the actual onion plant itself to allow it to maximize its growth. So the next one I actually don't have here, but is a great beginner plant. So long as you have enough sun and space, and it's perfect for feeding your family long term, and that is just squash in general. I'm dead serious when I say this. Anything from zucchini to spaghetti squash, summer squash, you name it. Pumpkins, butternuts, all grow great in Canada. It can be started by seed even as late as now. Of course, always go for the lower number of days on the seed packet, but nonetheless, you'll still get great results. And these can be used in a variety of different ways. They can be frozen, they can be canned, or they can even be dried out and ground down to make a replacement for flour. Yes, literal bread flour. So I highly recommend doing the squash route, very high in calorie and very diverse plants. Um, one of my favorite things to actually use squash in general for is things like lasagnas, or I love a good butternut squash uh, pasta sauce where you actually cook the butternut and then you literally just mush it like a mashed potato. And that brings me to my last one, which I'm actually just going to plant this weekend here in the city, but I did plant 20 pounds worth uh, prior to this um, at the farm, and that is potatoes. So potatoes, again, maybe don't store all year if you don't have the room or the proper storage conditions, but they can be dried out, ground down, and made into the very classic Idaho potato potato mash, which I don't know anyone who doesn't like that, just saying. So that's another great one to consider. But other than that, I'm going to be making a, another video on how many plants per person you should be planting based on which plants you're choosing. So I will be posting that video sometime in the future. I'm hoping for next week, but my schedule can kind of get a little bit crazy. And let's be honest, I'm having help mate with his garden and that's like a whole other full 
full-time job at this point. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. It's going fine. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments down below what your absolute must-have staple is in your garden to feed your family or how you're keeping costs down. I'm thinking of making a second channel where I'm just going to do like grocery hacks such as like making my own butter or storing my own cheese because I don't want to do that on this channel because I do want to keep it more gardening based but there are just like little weird redneck things I do in my everyday life <laughs> that I think you guys would actually find helpful maybe interesting maybe I'm just inflating my ego here and none of you will watch my other channel but still I fish I can teach you how to fill it a fish how to cook a fish I can even teach you how to tan deer hides just literally softening some hides right now. They turned out wonderfully. Anyways, whole other side of the road. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!